What's up guys? Thank you for joining me for a new video. This one is going to be a design tutorial. I'm going to show you how I made the all over print pattern that I used last week on my Amazon merch review of the two new product types, the throw pillows and the tote bags. So if you missed that video, I'll put a link to it right here in case you want to see me review those uh, brand new Amazon merch products. But the design that I used in them was original. It was Basically where I took photos of some micro chihuahuas and then I cut them out and then I created this kind of funny, to me it looks like kind of like a meme, like an internet meme. If you've ever seen the ones where there's like faces kind of floating through outer space, that was kind of the vibe that I got from this pattern that I created. And essentially I'm going to show you guys how I created that pattern because I asked you to comment below last time if you were interested and there was some interest. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right. so. The process I used to create this design or this pattern, I don't know what to call it. Let's just call it an all over design pattern. Um, and by the way, when I say all over design, I don't mean that it tiles seamlessly. You know how sometimes the designs do that? Uh, I'm nowhere near that level of sophistication or skill as far as my graphic design abilities go. So what I essentially did was made a pattern that can kind of repeat and looks fine you know what i mean or if you don't repeat it like i'm pretty sure when i uploaded to amazon merch i don't think i repeated the pattern anyways first thing you got to do is have something to take a photo of or i guess you can use digital artwork it doesn't have to start with a photo but i'm going to talk through how i did it and it all starts with your you know your phone your camera whatever it is you want to use to take pictures snap a picture load it up to your computer so typically i'll take a photo from my phone upload it to Google Drive, download it from Google Drive, and pull it into Photoshop. And then the next thing I do is I use the, um, this is just my personal preference. By the way, the graphic designers out there, if you have a better way of doing this, let me know. I'm very receptive. I'm sure there has to be a better way at times, but this is how I do it. So I use the polygonal lasso tool. And also the first thing I do is behind me on the layer panel, I'll probably select and then copy paste it and then turn off the background. By doing that, then I can cut out the pieces like this and it shows through the background of Photoshop and doesn't just show through the background of the photo itself. I think if you turn, if you don't duplicate the background layer, it'll show whatever color you have set as the, the background in Photoshop. So anyways, that's a quick tip. But then after that, all I really do is, this is partially how I do like YouTube thumbnails when, you know, in YouTube thumbnails, how people are cut out. I just do something like this where I'll just kind of, you know, you don't have to spend all day on it either. You can just kind of click pretty quickly and go along the edge and there's some little tricks to it like you can if you if you ever played like fantasy football for instance or fantasy basketball and you click in and you see the player uh, profile pictures and stuff like that like i'm pretty sure they have professional graphic designers zoom in to like really high resolution photos and that's how they cut out the players for the profile pictures but i'm not doing anything close to that level of granularity uh, i'm just doing kind of like a quick whatever feels like it works best style cutout. And so something like that should work just fine. And the next thing I'd do is I'd probably go to file new and make square dimensions, maybe make it like, well, I guess I should have looked up whatever the dimensions are for the Amazon merch pillows. I don't have it memorized. I typically write it down because um, if it's not 4,500 by 5,400, then I just use merch resize, which is this website. I talked about it in the uh, pillows and tote bags, but videos, but essentially with merch resize, it's a free tool. You can drag and drop your designs and convert it with like two clicks into whatever it needs to be. So anyways, I'll just do 1000 by 1000 and I'll take the picture of Onyx and cut it and paste it straight into here. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. And this, I'm not going to rebuild the whole design because I don't want to take all that time. I think you guys get the gist. So use the polygonal lasso tool, cut out whatever you need. Um, here I can show you, you know, the assets I used for this, um, the ult ultimately what was the design that I used on the Amazon merch pattern. So essentially you've got like some photos like the one I just showed you. And when you cut it out, you don't have to save your PNG asset, your cutout asset with that outer glow. I did in this case, but I didn't do it in every single case. Like you can see Pablo here. Um, I used this photo and you can see I cut out his head, but I didn't put the outer glow there. And same with Piggy here. 
or no, I did. I put the outer glow on her here. So if I pull this into Photoshop, you can see if I put a background layer behind her and fill it in. So you can see there, I added a, uh, a stroke of about two pixels, maybe four pixels. I guess it all depends on what size the actual image is. And then I put like a white outer glow. So if I pull these in to uh, my demo template here, my demo canvas, what I would do with Onyx is I would right click the layer behind me on the right hand side, go to blending options. Um, I, if I recall, like I don't think I needed a stroke on him, but I mean, I can just show you if I was going to do it, I'd probably go to center. So go to stroke. And then on the right hand side where it says position, I'd probably do center and I'd probably change the color to black or, you know, maybe use the eyedropper and select like Onyx color black to match his fur. All right. And then maybe reduce the size down to like four or three, something where it's not too noticeable, even two. And then I'd also go ahead and select an outer glow and I would change the color to that same color black. And the blend mode may need to change from screen to normal. And after that, I should just be able to play with the size. So there we go. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, keep in mind, like we're kind of having fun with it. It's not meant to look super realistic. <laughs> Otherwise you could just use the, the photo that we started with. So I probably do something like this. Maybe, I mean, the stroke to me is too bold. So if I was being picky, I'd probably change this to like a lighter color, less noticeable something like a grayish, you know, like that. That looks a little bit better to me. All right, and that would be the onyx head. And then what I do is um, bring over Pablo and Piggy. All right, so we got the three chihuahuas that we, um, though I don't want to say adopted because that would not be accurate. We paid a uh, premium for the three micro chihuahuas and I don't know if anybody actually cares but we ended up like giving piggy to my parents because it was not a good fit for Marielle and I and then we got Pablo but it's been a uh, my parents love her to death so it's, it's actually worked out great and those of you guys that have been subscribed to the channel uh, you may have seen boo boo and Murphy in previous videos they're no longer with us just due to old age unfortunately um, so anyways Back to the design tutorial, as you can see here with Pablo, I am going to also apply an outer glow. Uh, it automatically applied the settings from the Onyx cutout, so I'm just gonna change the color to a brown that I think matches or looks good on him. Uh, for some reason, some of these are coming in like really, is it because it's at 80% opacity maybe? All right, I'll turn up the opacity and choose a little bit of a lighter brown that's a little bit more fun, kind of an orangish brown. All right, there we go. And then the uh, cutout that I use for Piggy already has the white the white uh, glow, so no need to do anything there. And then this is really all I did, guys. So you see how we have our three um, layers here? I'm gonna just control T. So I've selected all three layers and I control T'd and then I made them about the same size, uh, roughly relative to each other. And then this is really all I did. And again, you might have a better way if you do, let me know in the comments below. But all I did was I select all three of these layers and I actually might uh, move Piggy in a little bit more central like that. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'll probably just make a new layer, um, combine all of these into one layer and then select all and just kind of pay, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste a whole bunch of times like that. And kind of, you can just tweak it, you can rotate. You can make it big, you can make it small. So this is essentially what I would do and essentially how I created it initially. It does kind of put a load on your computer. It asks a lot of the computing resources. So that's something to be mindful of as you do it. But this was basically how I made the design. So I'm just literally copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, make some big, make some small have fun with it. You can also go into like edit, transform, flip horizontal. So now you've got some looking to the left, some looking to the right. Um, after I do the actual, the left or the reverse facing one, you know what I might do is I might copy that layer and now put a bunch that are facing the opposite direction like that. And now I'm just trying to kind of fill in the gaps too that I see there that I see left in the, the design, you know, I 
And once the gaps are filled, then you can kind of make it work on like differentiating. So now that the whole background is kind of full, I can paste new layers, resize, rotate, etc., to kind of make it more asymmetric, less predictable, etc. So that's basically all I did right there. I think you can kind of just freehand it to fill up the background. And then once the whole space is filled, um, all the layers that you paste, you know, I'm just hitting control T on my keyboard. And when I hit control T, you will um, be able, I guess I can show you a quick demo of control T if you guys haven't seen that. Uh, I'm just gonna make a new layer. So then I paste the image and you can either hit control T on your keyboard. It's the shortcut for the equivalent of going to edit in Photoshop and then going to free transform, which is right above transform. And then you get that outline and you can just click next to the corner and you can spin. Also, you can drag any of these boxes in and out and it will resize everything. And in the new versions of Photoshop, it automatically keeps them to scale. In the old version of Photoshop, you have to hold shift. So in the new, now it's reversed. So now, which actually makes sense. But now if you wanna like skew it, you hold shift and it lets you kind of manipulate without it automatically keeping the dimensions the same. So that's basically it. I hope that's um, a good enough tutorial. I There's a reason why I started a YouTube channel dedicated to like making money through e-commerce and not a um, Photoshop tutorial YouTube channel because I know there's people out there that are better at Photoshop than I am. I Like I said, this is how I did it. If there's a better way, um, let me know. Share it with me when you find it. But otherwise, like this is pretty much it. You know, had some fun making it. Everybody that's seen the finished product that knows Piggy, Onyx, and Pablo, uh, they love it. So yeah, let me, if you want to compare the two, that's essentially, whoops, not there, here. Essentially, that's how I uh, built this design. So this is the original. And this is the recreation that we just did on this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Just wanted to let you know really quickly, I've got a weekly print-on-demand giveaway running. It's free to enter. You can take advantage using the top link in the description. This week, sponsored by Flying Upload for print-on-demand upload automation, Automate POD for print-on-demand design creation, and All American Graphics Premium Pre-Made Graphics. And right next to that link, I've got a free eight-day print-on-demand mini course that you can take advantage of for free with my print on demand Facebook community link right next to that one. So I'd love to see you in there in the Facebook group. Last but not least, I've got a full print on demand course, 10 modules over a hundred lectures, no fluff. It's all action oriented to help you make money, start scale and eventually automate your print on demand business. So check that out too. Thanks for watching guys. Do me a favor real quick, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed and you want to subscribe, that would be great, but thanks. I'll see you tomorrow.